Okay, this is 6K on January, not the 4th, January 18th, 2024. Okay, um, <clears throat> so to start off, I wanted just to review um, some of what we were thinking about for 1.2. Um, the release for 1.2 is targeted at the end of February, so they're, oh, what's the, so the, feature freeze for it is not far away. It's actually um, planned to be in the first week of February. So we really only have um, for some of this stuff, um, probably three more weeks, uh, about three, three more weeks or so <clears throat> to, to close on some of these things. And I don't think uh, we have, at least I don't think we're, we've made a ton of progress, at least that we're gonna, that we're close enough to make the feature freeze um, for one to two. So I think for these, I think we need to continue uh, them. I think they're probably all gonna be moved to one dot three. Do you, what do you think, Alay? Like, do we think, I mean, is any of this stuff, can we, um, I copied over from our notes from before. Let me open our list. Yeah. I, I don't think like, I don't think it's going to be um, one or two. So let me, I'll probably what I'll do is, if, unless you have, think we need to keep one of these for one or two, I'll probably change this to one dot three and we'll look at um, doing this in uh, one dot three, which will take us into the summer. Sure. So I think the, um, the last point, I think we can target that for one, two. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I can give you an update for that um, later in the call. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to see. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to, so I'll update the issue after the call. Um, so we'll do, um, so one or two will be the K-Walk. Um, what do I have here? Is it that? So like, yeah, so, so we, okay, so this, this will need, um, uh, I, I forgot what the exact details of what we wanted to do, but I think, what I recall is that we want to try and get something into the Qvert CI with this. Is that what is that what you're thinking with uh, yes. this? Okay. All right. So the one to two and and then we're gonna move these to one three. Okay. And then the remainder will go to one three. Then all right. So what I'll do is I'll um I'll probably just create another card and I'll update these. Then it'll be our one two deliverable, and this will we'll carry this to one three. Okay. Cool. All right. That's all I wanted to um to get with these let me close this okay good all right let's go to yours then let's go to uh talk about kwalk there you are <clears throat> yeah so um <clears throat> some updates with with the support of cubeboard right so the release current release that's being worked on with um, quark is 0 0.5 um, 0 0.4 already had support for generic controller so mm -hmm. we were okay. able to immediately test out a uh, CRD. Uh, okay, what cool. it was missing is that um, extensibility of impersonating client. And um, the other thing which we found out is uh, Qbert does not have status as a sub resource. It, you need to patch the entire object to patch the status. Whereas um, Quark was assuming that every CRD will have a sub resource, right? So those are the two things that were needed. And this PR has gone through multiple rounds of reviews and we've finally um, settled down on an API which supports both impersonating client as well as a configurable sub resource. So yeah, if you look at the uh, API there, um, the, the first field is impersonating config uh, in the spec. Yeah, that's renamed as um, patch status as uh, after review. And um, the other field is is um, status sub resource and both of them are configurable. So with that, um, I was able to send a VMI to running phase um, right out of the box. Um, without any changes. So you, you added this, you added the impersonating config 
Okay, I see. So this is uh, an existing um, uh, or what am I looking for? Um, some sort of a user account. So this is some sort of service account we're referencing it here, we're impersonating it for all of our API calls. And then this one is saying that we don't have a sub resource that you need to update. Is that what that is? Yes. So if the sub resource okay. status sub resource is false, it will patch entire object instead of oh, okay. just okay. the sub resource. Yeah. I see. Okay. <clears throat> makes sense. Cool. Cool. Okay. That makes sense to me. Cool. Okay. Cool. I mean, this looks like you've made you got good traction on this. So great. Yeah, and the second link in the agenda is the um, Quark demo, um, keyword demo repository. So um, what the um, keyword maintainers have done is they've put everything here um, as YAMLs that you need to patch in order mm -hmm. to get keyword working, right? So what I can anticipate is that once the all the features are in, we will take uh, something like this and move it to a uh, keyword repository. <clears throat> okay. So uh, what we what we do is uh, we have a CI automation that will install uh, Quark and then it will do customize apply um, all of these um, resources and then okay. you have a working VMI um, setup, right? So that's the setup part. Then we will need an end-to-end -end test that creates another 100 uh, uh, fake um, VMIs and um, gather metrics from them. So well, does this, those are does the this Okay, does this, this, so I don't, what's, I don't get the point of this repo. Is this so that, that um, Quark has CI that is gonna test Qvert? Is that what this is? No, so if you go to customize directory, um, and yeah, if you go to RBAC, so those are the role, uh, role and role bindings that are out of tree, but needed specifically for um, uh, keyboard support, right? So if you go to role, uh, you will see specific- Oh, I see, so you'll, you'll have, you'll reference this when you impersonate, is that what you mean? Is that uh, no, so, so if you go to role.yaml, uh, yeah. So in order for a uh, Quark controller to patch and update um, VMIs, it will need a set of permissions, right? So instead of okay. maintaining those permissions in in tree Quark um, repository, you can actually aggregate those out of tree. So yeah, we we'll, we we'll add the VMI patch permissions here, and we'll also add the impersonate permissions here. Right now, impersonate permission is missing, but yeah, we'll okay. add those here. <laughs> and when you apply this permissions, uh, all, both the extra permissions will be aggregated to the Quark controller service account, and then it will be empowered to work with Qboard. Similarly okay. with uh, the stage directory, if you go to stage directory, is uh, in the customize. Oh, and customize. Yeah, and yeah, VMI ready. So this is the same um, VMI ready stage, which we walked through where I added the two, two fields, but this one is missing, right? So similar to the role and role binding, this is another resource we will need specific to Cuba. Okay. <clears throat> so this basically allows Quark to, to test Qbert out of the box. Like when you do a union of all of these service accounts, and then if you wanted to um, try it, you have this you have this here to consume so you can use Quark with Qbert. Is that kind of what the purpose of this yes. is? Yes. Oh, okay. And then um, when you <clears throat> look at the VMI ready.yaml, all it's saying is whichever um, CRDs are in scheduled phase, uh, send them to running phase. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's saying which are whichever are not in running phase, send them to running phase, but uh, we'll extend that to specifically being scheduled. Okay. 
But yeah, yeah it, this is um, what is needed for clock. Does is maybe this is what you were saying, and I um before, but like, is the point eventually that this would live in Qbert and clock pulls from what Qbert maintains somewhere? Or is this or is this something you remains here permanently? No, so this can be decoupled from clock entry, right? Because this is this does not need to be maintained by clock. Uh, this okay. is our yeah. incarn or usage of uh, I see. clock. So, what so were this you is thinking? just you want this to be. Sorry, to try. what were we thinking? Is this is this something should be in Qbert, like, or do you think it should stay here? Yeah, we will take this and port it in Qbert so that it could be used in CI. Okay. Cool. All right, this is great. So they got you everything you need to get started, and then eventually we can take this and run with it in Qbert and point have Quark point over to where wherever this is maintained. Okay, that's awesome. I, I that's this is great progress. <clears throat> cool, right? Eh? Okay, and one thing I want to call out uh, is the pending work. So okay. what I'm thinking is that <clears throat> the stage in uh, uh, some of the other APIs in Quark is rapidly changing. Those are in V1 alpha state. So if we are really, um, if we really want to consume these in a stable way, we should shoot for contributing an end-to-end -end test so that our automation does not break on updates too. Um, so that uh, part is pending and I'm thinking of taking that up um, next. Okay. Um, cool. Keyword, okay. Yeah, I don't really have a great idea of where this end-to-end -end test will live. Ideally, it should be in Quark, right? So that yeah, um, every PR is merged with with some end-to-end yeah. -to -end. I agree, because otherwise, like, we're going to, uh, we don't want to be in the business of, like, oh, it broke on our end, come take a look, and then, you know, having to go back and forth. Yeah, if getting this into their testing would be ideal, I think that would be the right spot for it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah, okay. that's all I had regarding this topic. Okay, so then, um, so then we've got. I, I think like this um, piece, like where where it, it can, like we can probably start, or like this isn't really a blocker. Like we can start with this here, and then um, while we work on on this part, like what do you think? Like let's say you had all of this. Like you have the, we have the end to end test ready, so we're not making sure we're not getting any breakages, and then. Um, we have we obviously have our YAML here, and you get this merged. What would be next is like um, is that enough to then start working on contributing this into the into Qbert's CI, or do you think yeah. there's more? No, I think that's enough for Qbert CI. So the next would be um, <clears throat> we have a CI set up right that creates um, the cluster, um, make cluster up, and make cluster sync. Yep. I would have to add a similar uh, automation to also install Quark. So maybe make, um, you know, deploy Quark or something. Um, that automation will um, create all the resources that we walked through. So it will install Quark and get Quark set up for uh, Qbert. So that's one part I need. And the second part we need is, um, add a test uh, in the end-to-end -end test suite that creates uh, fake VMIs. Yep. Oh, so, uh, um, one more thing. Before that, I need a way to create um, all those fake nodes as well. So um, that will be another ste step okay. in the setup. So make cluster sync. So I think make cluster sync sounds like when, let's see, I guess make cluster up would do, because like the post cluster installation is, <clears throat> I think is make cluster sync. I think it's when we install Kubert and all that sort of stuff. So I think that's when we'd want to go in with clock. Do, what do you think about with the nodes being um, like architecturally here, like as part of the tests, not necessarily part of for make? Does that make yeah. any sense or no? Yeah, I think it's part of test make more sense because then we can, you know, programmatically configure them 
instead of yeah. doing it in the setup but one thing i want to be careful of is i don't want to touch make cluster sync directly instead i want to create a separate step for quark so that people who are not involved with uh, with simulation they don't have to deal with quark related setup when they run make cluster sync in their setup right there there's a bunch of um environment variables and flags we i think the way to do this was to create an environment variable like for example there's one for um launching uh, a grafana instance so like we we can so you can have a an environment variable for quark testing or simulated testing whatever we want to call it and and that would just install quark okay got it yeah um <clears throat> can do that that makes sense yeah, I think that's the best way to go because I think because people are so used to this, I think this is the I think that would be the way to go. So, um, one thing I would need help on, I think, um, from community is last time I tried to do this, um, I was stuck on making make cluster up and make cluster sync work. So I'll, um, uh, you know, poke you guys um, on on Slack if um, I run into same errors again. Yeah, I've had some issues recently too. I I think, yeah, we might just need to like to uh, dig in and try and figure this out. I I need to do it too. Like maybe we can do it together. I like to try and get through this because I I really would like to. I've had this broken for a while, and so it might just be a few things we need to change or some things that's changed in tree that we need to adjust. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lubo is here. Um, I think um, we'll need some of your help. Okay. Yeah, Lubo, have you had a uh, have you had to make cluster uh, up and make cluster support well for you lately? Uh, not really. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess we're all in the same place. So. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, it should work. It should work. So um, just send me a message. We'll have a look on it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Anything else to lay with this one? No, I I think that really transitions in into my next topic. Um, well, so yeah. uh, recently found that um, Cube Burner, uh, which we have been talking here as one of the contentious contentious projects to create these resources, um, <clears throat> has graduated to CNCF sandbox project. Um, with that, I think some of our issues on it being one maintainer driven and and things like that um can you know can be addressed. So I was thinking of potentially using um well, I'm not sure if we have time this release, but we can look at transitioning our um, creation of of the end to end test to cube uh, burner. Yeah, that's a possibility. Do you know if like um, the things that I remember when we looked at this, the uh, things that were um, uh, so one of them was the, um, the the maintain how well it's maintained, but also the um, uh, we wanted to talk to them about the the different tests that they covered. So yeah, I think like that was the first one though, like how well maintained it is. Oh yeah, so we've had a lot of maintained. I think it was when it started, there was only like two people. So it was yeah. going quite a bit. Okay. Well, good. Well, I hope there's a bunch of things we can look at and reuse, like the tests that we knew, the type of tests that we wanted to conduct. That'd be great because then we don't need to yeah. rewrite these so things. Yeah. At high level, they do two kinds of tests. Um they have uh a scale up test and then they have a churning test. So a scale oh, up perfect. will go to whatever n number you have. And then a churn test will go to n number first and then churn x resources after. Uh, and I think Marcelo already contributed a lot of kubeword support to this project. Uh, yeah, he did. He did a while back. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think that was part of the, I think part of the discussion was like, when we were, when he was talking about it was the two types of tests that we needed. And it's, I guess they, those are the two main types that they have built the project on. That's great. I don't know. Do you have the, uh, where, I don't know if you've looked at the docs. Where did you find this, um, the type of tests? Uh, I think it might be in the example. Example. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Cluster intensity. Okay. COD sale desk density. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah, the they're... same language we use. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You say it's cube word density as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's cube word density. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, cool. Okay. That's yeah. Good. So cool. this, if we wanted to transition here i think there are a couple of extra features we could get so one thing is if you go back up one one folder um you'll see a uh, grafana dashboard and metrics profile so this project has an inbuilt support of um, collecting metrics at the end and pushing it to either uh, you know elastic search or grafana or things like that so <clears throat> The, the collection part is something we are already doing, but the sending it to um, to another persistent store is something we, we could potentially use in the future. So lots of possibilities um, with, with uh, how this is architected. Okay. It's good to see. Yeah, I think... Um... <clears throat> We we've had we've had this like that we've had that we've had some of these performance tests in mind like we did the density but we haven't expanded to the um to the uh what what is it, what what did you call it I forget the name of it now the um the one where you fill it if you fill it to max of capacity churn. and then you yeah, yeah. churn that's the one churn. yeah the churn test we haven't we don't have the full churn test implemented and it's one that we'd like to have okay cool. Okay, that's good to know. That's something we can consider. Okay, cool. All right, thanks a lot. Um, Lubo, do you have anything? Did you, uh, how have you been doing with your, uh, with some of your design? Yeah, so I have a couple of pages already written and things that I need to do. Okay. Still work in progress and doesn't have the structure I I would like to have for for sharing, but I shared with you uh, to have a look and a comment on it. Um, I already had started to posting some PRs that are related to the to the topic, and I think I uh, I progressed, uh, but at the same time I'm I'm now. Focusing on something else, so I need to uh, come back to it uh, next week probably to see how it looks. But I'm pretty confident that this month I can have uh, at least mapped everything or everything that needs to be done in order to complete this. So you you said you shared the doc um, the document somewhere. I don't. I don't, I don't uh, yeah. Remember. You should get an invite in your mail. Oh, because it's still private. Okay. No, I don't. I didn't see. Um, I never saw it. I just did it. So. Um, okay. Maybe it'll. Oh, I see it now. Okay. All right. Cool. No. Okay. Yeah, we take a look. Cool. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, anything else? Um, so since Lubo is here, I think we had one topic in the last or last to last. Uh, yeah, that one, the yeah. shadow node extension. Um, can we bring that up here? Yeah. <clears throat> um. Hey. Um. So this is the wanted to resume. Um, the discussion related um, to the shadow node PR. Uh, not sure if you had a chance to to look at this, but 
one of the alternative design logo that we were discussing is to potentially create a, a token distributor that will write the token to each node and then word handler on that node will have permissions that are specific to to that node um, and that can be distributed via this this token so um i've i've put down my thoughts here i wanted to get uh, you know get a discussion going whether this is something we could consider so what would be the argument to uh, not do it the way it's proposed and what would be the benefits of doing it this way? Yeah, so one of the things that the proposed solution is doing is it's mirroring the, the, the CRD, well, the node to a CRD, right? <clears throat> and so that that involves creating an extra CRD and then maintaining that CRD throughout the lifetime of, of the project, right? Unless we don't get this support out of the box from, from Kubernetes. So that's one thing. The other thing is things that come with maintaining that CRD is that what will happen to all the automation that takes into account a node things, right? So for example, if a node is cordon, how will that impact the shadow node? Uh, if a node has a condition, say uh, some specific driver not ready, which people have automation in their environment, how will that affect um, shadow node? So all of the scheduling and tainting decisions will have to be mirrored and we'll get into this complex um, situation where it will not be clear um, what decisions are taken from node and what are from CRD. So, so yeah. Uh, I just want to answer uh, a comment. This doesn't break your, your use case because the shadow node is only write proxy. Let me call it write proxy because we still read the nodes. Um, so all the matters are, or the reads are going to, from, the, from the node, but all, all the writes are going through the shadow node. So that should not, um, like if you don't modify the cube weird, respectively, if you don't modify the weird handler to to write these things, then you are not going to be broken. Okay, yeah, so, okay. so that's good to know that will not be broken, but every single write to a node will turn out to be two writes if uh, Hubert is installed, right? In a no. cluster? No. Oh. Okay. Um, so there are um couple of things and, or three uh, three major functions uh one of them is making the the nodes schedulable on un or unschedulable uh these are going to be proxied so these are going to be double right um but this is not something you do all the time you usually do it only when you have some kind of maintenance of the, of the node or update of the keyword. So I would say this is acceptable, uh, but you can you can uh, say otherwise that is not. Um, then there is a uh, labels, which are basically st static, so they need to be only uh, proxied once. And third stuff is um, heartbeat, which is not going to be proxied on the node at all. So it still remains as a one write. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, I, I think this opens up new possibilities for, for bugs, right? So for example, let's say KubeWord is um, transitioning to uh, cordon or uncordon state, right? And word handler or the controller that is doing this right through proxy is not up. Um, will that lead to VMIs not being scheduled on that node? Pardon, what is not up? Uh, the controller that does the mirroring. Mm -hmm. If that, yeah. so I, I forget whether that's a word handler extension or a word con controller extension. Word controller. Okay. Controller. So, got it. Okay. So, if word controller is not up, then anyways, VMIs are going to be stuck, right? So, we are not adding a more. Right. So, yes, there is um, the, there is additional risk that if the controller is not up, the, the labels could not be up to date. Um, the impact of it is minimal because if you are going to schedule a VM on a node which is not which is not handled by any word handler, it's going to be just it's going to just fail. Uh, I think we have the three or five minutes timeout, but that can be configurable. Um, yeah, that should be it. But, um, but to it, to us one one thing to add, the control is uh, usually deployed in HA uh, setup, so these kind of things should not happen uh, that often. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So yeah, I think you have addressed all the cons. I think one con outstanding is regarding the scale. And I think what you are saying is that there is really only two or three update calls and those are sparse. So scale is not an issue. Um, <clears throat> well, right. having discussed all the cons, one of the pros of this feature, well, of the alternate design is that it could really be extensible to use any daemon sets, right? So let's say if we have proved out this feature um, and you have uh, other daemon sets similar to what handler in the environment, you could potentially use it for all. Uh, in, in this case, we are lucky that we are able to handle the um, node requirement via shadow node, but that might not be the case with all, all the daemon sets. So in general, I think this is a more extensible um, design. That was one of the pros I, I had in mind. Right, Eric doesn't like that, but um, I think it's more or less the, the function of Kubernetes that should do it. Uh, I'm not sure he's like, we would need to em embed it into, into the Kubernetes and that that itself is going to decrease the chance that anybody else is going to use it for, for their use case. Another, um, well, a question for you, Lai, with that last point you made. Would, um, if this was made as something that in, for, to solve the more general case, would the maintainability be higher or lower for, like, for example, for a Kubernetes developer like Lubo? Because in this case, Lubo is contributing this PR it means that we need to, the community needs to maintain this code. What would be the case if it was solved in the general case? Does, do you think that the design would be simpler or be more, um, more involved and what would the maintainability be? So I think the design would be at a similar level of complexity. Um, there, we are introducing a new CRD to write uh, from, to read from node and write to node. Here, we are introducing a new CRD that will 
distribute some kind of token to each node, right? So I, at a large um, complexity level, high level, it seems similar um, in terms of um, implementation. I think in terms of maintainability, um, we could potentially get a larger audience to come and contribute to this project, right? Because this is a well-known um, CV that would be impacting, I'm assuming, many, many people um, running daemon sites. Yeah, so I, I, I think it will be a wider net of people coming in to uh, contribute stuff. And we would need to maintain it as part of the cube bird, right? That's not really necessary, right? We could have a separate project uh, that does this, and then we install it via KubeWord into, into the uh, KubeWord stack. So whatever manifests that are needed, the CRDs and, and the custom resources, um, we, we install that as part of the KubeWord apply uh, mechanism in, in board operator. Um, I guess but... my concern in the way would be, go ahead, Lebo. No, sorry, finish your thoughts. Yeah, was... <clears throat> my concern would be that the um, with Qbert having all the infrastructure in the community that it currently has versus um, trying to, um, part of the success of the project being that we have to, um, if it were to go on its own, we have to generate the, um, some level of community around it and a lot of the infrastructure around it. So, and then, and I think that's maybe what people were saying is like, it would be within Kubert, we would probably just to, to especially to, to bootstrap the project would make sense um, because of the kind of getting the community going on it. That, that would be the concern. It's like, what would be the, you know, what would be the cost to maintain if it's, if it's something that can very easily build a thriving community, then um, sure. But it then, but then it, that still has a cost to maintain. Whereas, what is Qbert's cost to maintain this? It's um, it's the same as what it is, you know, for any patch. You know, it's a known quantity. Yeah, um, I think that's a valid concern. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Ryan. So the other, one the, the other way like, potential on. one potential way I was thinking that could address this concern is you know how different uh, projects are being part of um, the the Kubernetes sig. For example, if you look at um, Quark, right, that project is under sigs dot So. It, it, would bootstrapping a project in, in that uh, community give us a better, or will that help in creating the community in, in with less amount of work since we are getting the, the six.gets.io um, group? So I, I'm assuming more people would want to be part of, of that. Sure. Yeah, I think that would help. But I guess what I'm what, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that um, uh, thinking of the investment. Um, so like when we so like so who who becomes responsible for maintaining this? Like is this like when when Lubo contributes this? It's 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 Lubo and the community who are maintaining this versus now. Um, the new project it's it's whoever creates it and whoever joins it's the un it's the unknown nature of it it's not that's not a problem right it's not like necessarily like saying no we can't, like it's not possible to do it's more that um there's more risk to it and and i think what lubo is getting at is that that kubernetes should fix this and 
and and that's the other thing to keep in mind is like what would be the best way to get kubernetes to fix this is it a project that um has that has some people working on it that solves the problem or do we go with um you know or do we not like could not necessarily solve it for kubernetes you know we wait we wait you know, we sit and wait um you know, that that's another thing to consider like what would would eventually get kubernetes to solve this yeah so my hope was that if we prove this out in a separate project we can take all of that logic and port it in kubernetes that that will become like a poc crown for uh, kubernetes and you know we can prove it out that way but i think i think, that's about, I think that's we don't to... really need to do that right? we can go that... directly I think that's a valid thought, but um, I think we need to be more aggressive and thinking that this needs to be tackled in, in tree of Kubernetes, not as part of as a, as a side project. Um, Got it. Like, yeah, you could still, like, to your point, sorry, Lou, but you could still, like, like say that tackling and entering Kubernetes could prove out the feature as well. Like, that, that is possible. I mean, I guess it's um, it might be a little different in the general case, but it does... Do, does prove out the concept of why it's needed or what the, you know, one of the use cases for it. Yeah, so there, that, there, that, there's that. a way to, it would, it would be I, like, if you were to create, you know, draft up a cap for this, I, I would just link this PR. This is exactly what it's for. Yeah, hey, Ryan, I, I definitely think we can do the POC in there. The reason why I was thinking of a separate project is I thought that our, um, Kubert timelines were more aggressive and getting all of the process around cap and, and proving it out there in, in Kubernetes um, upstream would not align with, with the timelines we had um, for Kubert. Uh, so that's why um, I thought of as a separate project, but th those are valid points. I think that those make sense. Um, one one thing I wanted to call out is a similar con I had in mind for the existing shadow node approach as well, as in, let's say we go short term with that route, right? Um, we have a shadow node CRD. What is the plan to move away from it eventually when this support is um, in Kubernetes, like in tree? Um, we have introduced the API, uh, so we can't deprecate it. We, we will have uh, people who, who will come use this and, and create automation around this. We should not, you know, break. I, I mean, the, the API evolution documentation right now is that any API, um, we, we should be really careful in deprecating and removing it, right? Uh, the same goes with with VMI preset and things like that. So what is the uh, approach of, let's say once we have a shadow node, um, how will we go ahead and transition to a more generic solution? I mean, just to comment on the people are trying to use the shadow node, that should not happen. Uh, we explicitly don't, uh, don't, don't grant any 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 RBAC so permissions to any user or any role in the cluster. It should be viewed as internal implementation. It should be outlined also in the PR that it's only uh, internal implementation and any any you know um, any dependencies on it will break in the, in the future basically, and to to comment on the, what would be what would take uh, for us to to consume the Kubernetes solution, it would most likely be just a revert of this PR because we 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 could then just just turn back and use the native uh, nodes again. Yeah, I am not really sure if that would be like there is no feature in kubernetes right now where 
an API is internal and folks don't use it. Like if we ship the API, there is no, like it could be used in many, many creative ways by the user and we'll really have to control it. Of course, but they need to have a uh, permissions for it. Um... So the... you don't have it in in the KubeWord stack, right? But you can create those permissions as cluster admin. Right. And I would blame the cluster admin for doing something which was not supposed to do. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I get that point. I mean, we can, it's really, not meant to be used like that, but that that's what I'm trying to get at is that once there is an API, since it is not restricted at Kubernetes level, people use it in uh, imaginative ways to to you know solve valid use cases. And we can take a stance that okay, we'll we'll break those. This is supposed to be broken and we'll break it. So don't use it. But um, is it a good API experience um, for Kubert user? Um, I would argue that it is because it's hidden by default. You need to make additional steps in order to uh, expose it to normal users. If you do it, <laughs> You are at your own, you know, you are kind of doing something yeah. you weren't supposed to. So when you so say you... hidden, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, is this, are you marking this as alpha then? I mean, all the things you're describing are something that's like an alpha feature. Sorry, but, uh, what is the question? Well, the question, Lulu, the question is that um, is is the shadow node API considered an alpha feature, something where we have a, a feature flag and we hi, we mark the API as part of alpha, because it like the way you're describing it would be that it's like an, treated as an alpha API. No, it's more like international internal the uh, implementation detail. Um, like but what, when what I, about a when feature I... flag? Do we have to like? Is there anything that you have? To turn it off? No, it would be turned on by default. And the why I'm saying it's going to be hidden by default is because nobody is going to have an RBAC to, for example, uh, view the shadow node or list or watch or not to mention create uh, a shadow node. I think I what I worry about is with hiding it is the um, is the wrong impression. I, I think if if you have a flag, I would have a flag for this and say call it alpha. But you can call it on by default if you want. But have it as alpha, and um, because I think people understand the consequences of it if it is even if it's you know if it's marked as alpha. I I think that 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 would be the concern because I like a, if you're gonna. If you're not expecting, because because the point is like, this would go away at some point, and so that's that's what we need to communicate. Right, but for for example, um, today we use labels or annotation on in the Kubernetes uh, API, and we don't really mean the the annotation or labels to be uh, as part of the API. Uh, it's more like implementation detail as well. We don't introduce the feature gate there because it's a, uh, well, we, we just don't, right? Mm. Mm. I'm not sure. I mean, as, long, like, as long as there's no, way, that, as long as there's no that, way for someone to misunderstand, that's, that's what, because if you're going to take it away at some point, as long as there's no, no way for someone to misunderstand that they could depend on in some way, then that's fine. But if if there is a way, then it, I would it'd be better be safe and it'd, it'd be better to be safe to mark it as, as a feature flag with alpha and then and have it enabled. So do you think that document documenting the feature 
um, and explicitly uh, saying that it's only part of the internals would be not sufficient? I think the, I yeah, I, I worry because the, um, uh, I think the thing that people are mostly gonna see now they, I mean, they might come across it. I think some people will, but um, not everyone will. And I think as long as, I just think as long, maybe in the documentation, if you mark it as you know, something in alpha in the documentation, I think that's like what I'm getting at. It's like, as long as it is, we have it, we have clear evidence that somewhere we can point to people that this was alpha and it's not something you should depend on with any sort of, you know, any, you should not have any dependencies on this. So I, I mean, I suppose that could be in documentation. I think to cover all their bases would also to have a feature flag for it and clearly mark it as alpha. I think that would that would cover all, all of our, our bases. Yeah, I can do the documentation. Um, I can't do the feature guide because um, it would complicate uh, the code. I'm not sure if we could make it, if we could make it, you know, uh, work with reality. Okay. I mean, as long as it, we just need to make sure there's something we can point to that's really clear that this is not something people should be depending on. It's an internal yeah, quotation that's going away, you know, something that we anticipate it going away. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. But late, does that address your concern? I don't know. I mean, I, I think, um, at least that, that kind of came up when you were talking you know, in my mind of something we need to address. I mean, yeah, it does. But that, so these are the kinds of discussion and challenges we are having with the TC API, right? Like we can document it, but does that really stop people to create automation on it, right? So it's just, we are saying that, okay, if you do create automation on it, it's your fault, we will not support you. But just like how um, there is no feature in Kubernetes to address this token distribution, there is no feature to stop API usages. And, and in terms of this is really an internal and there will be no RBAC, well, no CRD has RBAC for it un unless and until someone creates it, right? So we are saying we will not create it by default, but really it does not make this CRD a hidden CRD. Anybody could use it still. That's true. And um, unfortunately there is no way to, you know, uh, stop some somebody from doing harmful, harmful uh, things. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to think if, if there is a way to make it more clear that this is only going to be internal. LA in the API review is what did, what did you guys settle on? You guys it sounds like documentation at the very least, but um is feature flag also a requirement for something that would be meet this criteria? Is that something like an internal detail that's like an alpha feature? Uh I don't think this internal only API discussion has ever come up in the basic API call. It well, maybe, might be maybe, good to bring that discussion. Well, maybe it's like, maybe it's the wrong classification. It's sort of, it's, I, how about it just an alpha feature? Like, cause it, to me, that's what, it's just, it's, this sort of meets all the criteria. It's just in addition to it, it's something we use internally. Yes. Yeah, I, I think this classifies well as alpha feature and there is two distinction to be made here. One is the feature gate itself, and one is the ability to turn this feature on and off. Right? There are there is two separate states, um, and I'm not sure if what you are considering is is um, in the first one or the second. I think it's the second one. I think the, I think we need to, to me, it's that we need to mark, I think this is an alpha feature and then we need to mark it as such. Like, 
if that means the criteria is documentation that's clearly something she people shouldn't depend on and then possibly um i mean maybe something you can look at legal maybe it's what would what would this look like if we had to turn it off with a with a feature gate i don't know maybe it's maybe it's be hard to do but something to consider i i, I think it's just a good idea because like there there could be a lot just like we're arguing we can't stop someone from doing something wrong we also don't know why someone would want to turn this off um so i can give you reasons why this could be turned off, right? So let's say a user um, decides that they don't want to introduce this new CRD in their system, and instead they have a way to stop um, the uh, um, it, permissions escape uh, in word handler via some other things like gatekeeper or things like that. Um, and they don't want to take this additional performance hit. There is a legitimate case that they can choose to, uh, you know, turn this feature off. Yeah. So and I I think I I agree with you, Ryan. In in other words, that having a feature flag will be good because it will then only people can volunteer into it into that feature flag. I'm not sure I, I can technically uh, get a get a get a code working uh, with feature guide. To be honest, because the thing is, we, we we need to remove the permission, right? Because that's that's the security fix. And uh, if you let people to just turn it on and off, and it's just they just turn it off randomly, it can happen that you get into the situation where you lo lose the system. Or lose the handlers because now they don't support uh, the shadow node. <clears throat> like it's al already, it was already hard to think about all the situation where I'm going from I have the permission to node, I'm going to remove it. And I need to then back off to the shadow node. And basically with the feature gate, I need to also think about situation where I don't have the permission. I'm using the shadow node, but I gain the, uh, gain the permission and I need to fall back to the node again. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I could think of is that you just don't allow people to patch it. Um, you don't. You you only allow fresh deployments to go one way or another. You might simplify it. Okay. Well, I think it's something to think about. I think then. Um, at the very least, we need documentation just to market it out. What would be good, and then maybe you can look and see what we come up with well for this. Maybe there's a way to do it. That's it's a little bit simpler. Okay, cool. All right, guys, we're at time. That's a good discussion. Thanks. See you guys next week. Thanks, folks. Bye. See you. All right. Bye. -bye. See ya.